Today, let's talk Afrofuturism, male tampons, and pregnant pot smokers. Yeah, it'll get interesting. Searching for sanity continues to get harder and harder on our nation's college campuses as leftism takes over America's universities. Five, another day, another statue. Students and faculty members at the University of Oregon are demanding the removal of a pioneer statue on campus 100 years after it was installed. One student shared that while walking under the statue, they felt inferior, while another stated that the rifle slung over the statue's shoulder made people feel uncomfortable. Four, Portland State University spent the summer mulling a decision on whether or not to disarm campus police. Student protesters on campus have demanded that campus police officers be disarmed, claiming that armed police are a ticking time bomb and represent a significant danger on campus. Three, a literature professor at SUNY Old Westbury recently wrote an article explaining his joy seeing poor white people beg on the street for food. He said, it feels like Afrofuturism after America falls. It feels like a black nationalist wet dream. The professor researches African-American aesthetics, surrealism, Marxism, and feminist theory for the university. Two, numerous colleges, including Syracuse, Cornell, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison, have installed menstrual products in men's bathrooms in an effort to educate students that everyone can have a period and deserves free period products. One, the University of Washington received a nearly $200,000 grant from the National Institute on Drug Abuse to conduct a study in which pregnant mothers will be paid to frequently use marijuana. Once their babies are born, their brains will be scanned for possible birth deficiencies and disorders. As the fight for free speech on campus continues, we say good for you to the University of Louisiana Lafayette. The university recently updated its free speech policy, stating that they will no longer regulate student or faculty speech that is protected by the First Amendment. The policy states it is not the school's responsibility to shield people from ideas or opinions that they find unwelcome, disagreeable, or even deeply offensive. In Search of Sanity, I'm Isabel Brown for PragerU.